Okay, so we're looking at the vertebrae right now, and on your test, you of course need to know the different vertebrae, uh, being able to distinguish the cervical vertebrae from that of the thoracic vertebrae, from that of the lumbar vertebrae. Uh, one of the characteristics associated with the cervical vertebrae are these openings here uh, that would be found in the transverse uh, process. These openings are called the transverse foramen. You should already be familiar with some of the basic structures of the vertebrae, which includes the body, the spinous process, and in this case, this is actually called a bifid spinous process. We have the lamina, which is here, and then the pedicle, which would be here. Uh, we also have the superior articulating process or surface, and the inferior articulating process or surface. Again, these are the same structures you would find on any of the vertebrae, uh, so you need to be prepared to be able to identify them on all of them. Again, pedicle, superior articulating process or surface, inferior articulating process or surface, spinous process, lamina, transverse process, body. This, of course, is the vertebral foramen here. Okay, now. Uh, unique to that of the cervical vertebrae was the transverse foramen. Unique to that of the thoracic uh, vertebrae is these two spots here. One here, this depression that's on the transverse uh, process, and then this spot right here, this depression here on the body. These two are the articulating surfaces for the rib. The rib actually will attach to those two locations there, the head here and then the tubercle of the rib here. The lumbar is unique based on the size of the body. You'll see that the body is much larger on the lumbar vertebrae than that of the uh, thoracic or the cervical. Uh, you'll also notice that the processes that are sticking out are more stubbier. Uh, they're much, much shorter in, re in retrospect to the size of the lumbar vertebrae. You'll see here's the transverse process. Here's the spinous process. You'll have the superior articulating processes here and the inferior articulating processes here. Now, of course, one of the questions might be is how do I know what's superior and what's inferior? You need to look at the slope of the line. The slope of the spinous process will always point downwards, and that's how you can tell uh, what's the top and what's the bottom. So if it's not sloping downwards, then you're looking at it upside down. Okay? Alright. That's it for this.